Does Shuka Sean believe that he can beat Marab? I ask you if you believe it. I asked you if you believe that Shuka Sean believes it. Let me tell you something Sean said. Sean's been calling out Marab. He won't stop. Nobody calls out Marab. Nobody calls out Marab except Ricky Simone. Ricky got the fight once and beat him and for whatever reason wants to beat him up again. Nobody calls out Marab. There's a lot of respect there. There's even a fear there. What Marab has to bring to the table you can't prepare for, it's an intangible. That conditioning you can't prepare for. You can get up and you can go do your sprints. You can time the damn thing, find out what intravenous is. You can even get your EPO. You cannot prepare for an intangible-like conditioning, and it's frightening if you're dealing with a guy who's learned to weaponize pace, and that's what Marab has done. So, nobody wants to fight it, but Sugar Sean says that he does. I just want to tell you what Sugar Sean said. There's so much honesty. You know, it's so refreshing to hear Sean. I, I know that he's a young guy, and I, I know that there's a level of what, what you believe is trash talk. You have no idea how much truth talk comes from Sean. You, 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 you miss because he's entertaining. You miss because his hair is three different colors. You miss because he's smoking a joint. I mean, you think he's silly. He tells the truth constantly. You just think it's trash talk. I want to tell you what he said. He said, what get, this, is, this is Sugar Sean talking. I'm going to quote. He says, what gets me excited about Marab. When I fought Peter Yan, it was, I love people who say I'm going to get smoked, and I ain't got no shot. I ain't got no chance. Now listen to this. This is against Peter Yan. That guy was scary. It's funny, too, like Marab, Aljo, Henry. These top three guys in the division right now are three of the best grapplers in the sport. I've just been grappling so much. I've been working on it so much that for me, it's exciting. Four years ago, I'd have been like, F it. I'm not ready for these mother effers, continued O'Malley. But I've literally been grinding so much on grappling and learning, just fighting, that it excites me now. I can't wait to prove this to these mother effers. And he says that he's willing to fight Murat. It's interesting. It's very interesting. Because where, where, how much of that is totally accurate? I'll, I'll go back to this thought. Sugar Sean if he continues on this trajectory, is going to be the champion of the world, and Sugar Sean is going to be defending against Marab. We all understand that. What's about to change in Sugar Sean's life that he knows, and he and Tim, one of the great minds, one of the great minds in all of MMA, is Sugar Sean's coach, Tim. Training partner. I've, I've known him. We've, 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 we've helped each other over the years, and I can just tell you what a great mind he is. But I bring that to you because when I tell you something's going to change in Sugar Sean's life, he is going to start being main events. Which means what Sugar Sean is used to doing, he is now going to have to do 70% longer. So if you have a problem with getting taken down, the last thing you want to do is be in championship rounds for any reason. That is one tool that doesn't get better as the fight goes on. If you get taken down in the first round, you for sure will get taken down in the second. For sure in the fourth, for sure in the fifth. If you can stop it in the first round, you have a chance of stopping it in the fourth and fifth. But it's one of those things where the meter goes down. The meter doesn't go up because of the condition involved. There is nothing from a cardiovascular standpoint that uses more energy in the sport of MMA than a takedown which is why when you're fresh, whatever that meter is, think of a video game, it only goes down. Sugar Sean, who's a wonderful kickboxer, learning the grappling, number one ranked fighter in the world for the sport of MMA, is going to have to start doing it, and he's gonna to have to start defending people, and in this case, we're talking about Marab for 25 minutes as opposed to 15, and that's just an interesting proposition. It truly is. Sugar Sean's going to have to fight Marab. We understand that. Going to be fighting him within the next year. With any level of realisticness. Of course, we don't know the matches. Any level of realisticness. Right? Let, let's paint with a broad stroke. He could have fought him a year ago. If he fights him in a year, he's going to fight him for 25 minutes. If he fought him a year ago, he would fight him for 15. It's a different fight. It's a different contest. It's a different strategy. 
And I do wonder with Sugar Sean, because I believe him. I believe him because he tells the truth so often, but I also believe him because I know his coach. If anyone can prepare and game plan and be able to stop a guy that's very heavy in one dimension, believe me when I tell you it's Tim. It's hard for me to, to, to express to you in stronger language what a good mind this guy has for the sport. He'll know how to come off the mat. He'll know where to turn his hips. He'll know when to push the head. He'll know when to frustrate a wrestler. And Marab is very one-dimensional, but he also has an intangible that is flat frightening, which is a pace. He not only took Peter Yan down, he attempted to take him down a total of 46 times, 46 times in five rounds. Those are crazy numbers. There's no way to know what 46 divided by 5 is, but we can agree that it's at least close to 10. There's no way to know. We, I mean, we could argue about that, and scholars have gone back and forth for years. We'll never, but it's close to 10. Then you take 10 and you break that down into a round of which is 5 minutes. There's no way to know what 10 divided by 5 is. Like, nobody knows that, but it sounds like about 2. It sounds as though he's going for a takedown every 30 seconds. Do you know how intimidating that is? You don't have time to do anything else. You're coming at me. I defend you. Great. That means you stop doing it. Now we start going to the body. No, he comes back and does it again. It's a double cross. So now I defend the takedown. I stopped, okay, I stopped you twice. Now we're going to go fist it because he comes in, takes you down a third time. It is frightening what Marab is doing. It is a very different fight. I don't care to cast an opinion on it. I'm sharing with you. It's a very different fight to be fighting him for 25 minutes than it is 15. A year from now, Sean's going to be in there. It's going to be for 25. He could have fought him a year ago, and it would have been for 15. And it's just interesting. It's just an interesting thing. Sean realizes what he's getting into. He realizes what stepping in the deep end is about. He realizes what moving up the card is about. But one thing that I'm not positive you all have considered, And it doesn't have to do with the money Sean's making. It doesn't have to do with him being ranked number one. It has to do with how popular he is. They're going to need him, and they're going to use him in main events in their 25 minutes, and I'm just bringing it to your attention. No other point. He will fight Marab within a year. He could have fought him within the last year. Two very different matches. You change one thing about a sport, you've now changed the sport. You ever seen him play basketball where they don't call fouls? I mean, guys like get together and they, they, they play hoops, but they don't call fouls. It's a completely different sport. You change one thing, you've changed it. You make a sport 25 minutes instead of 15, you're doing something different now. Sean's going to start doing something different now. I personally am looking forward to it. But when you think the guy's talking trash, I've only heard Sean tell you the truth. <laughs> 